Hello everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to the Book Refuge and welcome to a, uh, I don't know, kind of a chatty video. Um, this is a video that's been, people have asked me to make a few times um, because I have seen some of my other friends make them and I really had to think about what it is about a romance that intimidates me. What are some things that keep me from diving in? What is making me gatekeep the book from myself? And I'll be honest with you, not a ton keeps me from reading a book that has to do with the book itself, like even from an intimidation factor. I mean, we will, we'll get into that, but when I was building this list of books, it more so has to do with my own perception of like, I don't know that I would like it less than being intimidated. So that's difficult. There are some that honestly intimidate me because of their age, because of their length. Um, sometimes the hype, like there are definitely a couple on this that it's because of the hype. And then some intimidate me because I maybe wanted to read them and then I saw some friends read them and I saw them either not like it or like it so much that I'm just like, nah, I don't know. So yeah, I've, I've shared this many times. I can be a snob when I see some people totally in love with something, even though I literally am someone who creates hype for books. It's what I do, it's what I get paid for at this point. When I see it happening and I slowly see all my friends liking something, I get very intimidated and I'm not sure if I also want to jump on the bandwagon. So it's just a very weird thing for me. So this video, you know, the question romances that intimidate me, it really kind of mixes with a little bit of like books that I'm scared of the hype for and or books that I've just are old because that that's one category is I'll be honest with you, there is three, three books on this list that are a contemporary book that are, you know, there's a dark and there's contemporary. One of these is a more fantasy than romance, I'm pretty sure. I know it's an erotic fantasy. And then all the rest are historicals that intimidate me. That is where my biggest track of intimidation lies. And then if we go deeper into that, the reasons that that might be is because I love diving into old school romance. I mean, I have a historical romance book club with my best friend, Crystal, and we don't only read old school, but we've read a fair amount. I'd say the books we've read for book club have been half, you know, bodice rippers or old school and half like more modern ones that take place after the year 2000 when they've been written. Um, and I, when I read a historical, I like it to have an audiobook and I like to be able to get lost in it. And so if it's too old, if it's too much of a bodice ripper or too much of old school, I tend to get lost in just trying to make my way through the books, you know? And so when I don't have an audiobook for that, it's, it's like, it's a gatekeep for me. It's a hurdle. Um, so we're going to see that come up pretty much immediately for a lot of these. So I don't know. I, I was planning this to be more of a discussion about why, but I think we'll just go through. I'm going to start with the contemporary books, start with the ones that I most often have put off and like said no to um, or have had on TBRs and taken back off of TBRs because I am still a mood reader. I put out pretty extensive TBRs. And for the most part, for the last year, I've been good at completing those. Part of it being, I now have a Patreon where people are picking books for me to read that they are paying me to do. And so I finish those books because that's my privilege to be paid to read those books for people. Um, and there's a lot of ARCs that I sign up for, to my own detriment sometimes, piling on the work for myself. Um, but I am still a mood reader to a degree. Um, when I build a TBR, if there are books that when I get to them, I don't want to read them, I usually will push them off or skip them or something like that. It just is how it is. That's how I'm able to read as much as I do. So I don't know if this is going anywhere. Like I said, we're going to start with the contemporaries that intimidate me. And again, 
I'm not so intimidated that I will never read them, but I also wanted to make sure I was picking ones that I actually feel a little bit of like, I look at the book and I feel a little bit of fear of reading it, not just an annoyance of the hype. Because one of the books on this list is because of the annoyance of the hype right now, where I'm just like, it can't possibly be as good as everyone thinks it is. And that's when I make myself feel like a snob. And I'm like, stop it. Because people say that about books I love. People say that about Sophie Lark. They're like, she just can't be as good as I think she is. And I'm just like, shut up. Yes, she is. I will die at her feet. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? All right, let's get into this. So yeah, there are three contemporary books that are on this list. And two of the three, I do plan to read them. So they're not like a never book. Like, that's the thing. 99% of the books on this list of 14 books, like I plan to read them. <laughs> They're just have gotten pushed off. And um, one of those would be Midnight Valentine by JT Geisinger. <laughs> so I don't necessarily have a goal of reading every book in her backlist. I do at one point want to do a deep dive in JT's books. And when I do a deep dive of someone's work, I like to have read at least one book in every series and a total of 80% of their works. Just if you're wondering why I haven't done deep dives for some authors, a big part of that is I haven't read enough of their books to be able to do that because it's a lot, it's a lot of work for me. But anyway, this is one of her standalones um, and this is one that is about Megan and she lost her husband so I think it was her husband or the love of her life yeah um the love of her life and so she is a widow and she moves to this small town and she meets this guy named Theo who is silent and he had a terrible accident where he's scarred and so some of it, it makes me think of like Archer's voice or something like that I don't know something tragic happened and then there are aspects of like paranormal in this one. So I've been told a few things what this one has to do with. Um, this one does have an HEA, y'all, not even one that is like subjective. This one has an HEA. Um, it's not a pen pal to divide us or a, you know, perfect strangers to divide us. This one does. But I'm still intimidated because JT's books outside of the Kings and Monsters books haven't always been a win for me. Um, Pen Pal was a win for me. You can see my vlog on that if you'd like. That book was one that would have been on this list before I read it a couple a week ago or whatever. But this is one that I'm nervous about. But JT was on my channel um, and this was one of the books that after I was on her channel she actually sent me um, a bunch of these. And this one she signed and it says true love never dies. Enjoy. So I definitely want to read this one sent to me by the queen herself, but I am nervous about it because I haven't heard that this one is as steamy as some of her others and that it does have someone who's going through grief, even though it's been five years since she lost her husband. Um, it still makes me nervous, but this is one on my list. Another contemporary on my list, we'll just get it out of the way. This is one that I don't plan to read, but I will say part of it is intimidation and part of it is hype. And this is where I said it's like hard to put this, but I'm also putting it on this list because I'm getting a lot of people asking me to read it, which happens when other romance tubers and channels love a book. Of course, they're hearing about it and they want to know my opinion. Number one, because a lot of you know like how my opinion differs for some of my friends. Like we just, we don't all love the same thing. And so if there's a book that everyone's loving, a lot of you guys will be like, Jen, what do you think about it to just, you know, get the multiple perspective? But it has a lot of things I'm not sure that I would like. And that would be, if you couldn't guess by now, Magnolia Parks by Jessa Hastings. Um, number one, I, of course, don't get these covers. I'm sure there's more to that and people are just loving them, which is great. Um, number two, I've heard this is like British Gossip Girl and that it's very angsty and there involves a couple that should be together but they keep hurting each other and they've said it's like very angsty and there's no HEA at the end and we don't even know when they'll get one. So that's number one, a big no fucking way. Um, but also they're huge and also people say they're angsty and beautiful to read. Now the only, 
The few other authors I've heard that said about are like Kennedy Ryan, and I find it very hard to believe that these could be compared to that. But again, this is coming out of my mouth, my trashy mouth, having not read them. And a lot of my friends are loving them, including Big Sis, and Big Sis is liking it. But she also did advise me, she's like, it was very angsty. And she's interested in how this author will write in future books. So as of now, the answer of will I read Magnolia Parks is no. Um, maybe years from now or whenever it is that the whatever is finished. Please don't recommend me unfinished stuff. If I stumble across unfinished stuff like on my own, because that happens, that I stumble across unfinished things. And then I'm like, hey people, read this, it's unfinished. I know I'm a hypocrite. I know I'm a hypocrite, okay? I know. But with the series that people are literally telling me how angsty it is, and then it doesn't have an HFN or a happily ever after, I'm like, no, why would I do that? I don't torture myself on purpose for things. <laughs> anyway, I'm still rambling about this. So anyway, that's one that intimidates me, but also the hype doesn't have me excited for it. All right, and then the last one that is a contemporary one that I do plan to read. I'm thinking I'll do this in October, but I am very intimidated by. And that's going to be the Haunting Adelaide duet by H.G. Carlton. So after reading Does It Hurt, which is on my favorites of the year list, even though I highly suspect when I do my reread at the end of the year that it will not remain on the top of the list. I just have a feeling that it won't because I really enjoyed that one as a first time read through. I don't know how much it will hold up upon a reread. But anyway, I liked what was happening in that book. I know this one isn't the same. I know this involves a stalker. I know it has some very dark themes. I know it involves sex trafficking and kidnapping, not by the hero, um, and then dealing with trauma. So those are all things that I like. They are, I know that was a twisted way to say that, but those are all things that I like. But I was just very nervous about it because this was a book talk darling. And I've been burned dirty, burned badly by some book talk darlings, okay? Some have been winners, but a lot have been losers. And when we're dealing with topics like are mentioned in this one, I'm like, I can't fuck around with those. Like, I have read some extremely dark books about sex trafficking and, you know, non-consensual stuff, but I need to trust an author. And I never read anything by H.G. Carlton, so I didn't feel comfortable just jumping into that. But now, having read Does It Hurt, I know a bit of her style. I've talked more in depth now with people who have read both things. I feel better about it. I'm still intimidated by it, but I am planning to get to this duet probably for October. So, we'll see. So anyway, those are the ones that I have the most detail to talk about because they are, um, you know, contemporary ones that I've seen people reading and that have intimidated me. Now we're gonna go into um, a stack that I mostly am intimidated because of like size or age. But I am starting with one here to share that this one is a fantasy. I know this one probably isn't a romance, but I also am very curious about this series. But it's huge, y'all. It's like a thousand pages and it's just the beginning of a series and that's Cushiel's Dart and I think the series is called um what's the series called oh it just says books by Jacqueline Carey this was recommended by Pam Godwin when she was on my live show she recommended a couple of authors that are really um intense <laughs> and I'm interested okay I'm interested I can't help myself but I don't know. Uh, the audiobooks are on any play, so that's good. But again, I know this won't be a romance. I know that she's like, it's like erotica, but it's also has to do with like being a spy and the things you would learn while being a spy. And I was just really intrigued. So this is a book that I want to start like picking away at it, but I'm really nervous. So this book definitely intimidates me. 
Okay, now on to my stack of historicals. We're gonna go through these. So the first one of these historicals I will be reading but it got pushed back. We were actually supposed to be reading this book this month, so I was excited to be like, this is what I'm gonna be reading. And it's The Wolf and the Dove by Kathleen Woodwist. So I've read Shanna all the way through. I've also read the first 50% of The Flame and the Flower, just for historical purposes. I had no desire to finish it or to see it have a happily ever after because I didn't enjoy it, but I did read the first half out of historical purposes. and. I read Shanna and I gave Shanna five stars. I really liked it. This is my first edition of The Wolf and the Dove that I was given as a gift. Um, it is not a first printing of a first edition, but it's the closest I've gotten so far. But anyway, this one is like, this one gets recommended so much that I should like this one, give it a try. And we do want to read this for Rake Appreciation Society, but we were told just through the rumor mill that a bunch of Kathleen's books were going to be put on audio um, in unabridged form, maybe like updated, but not like cutting huge chunks out. And that got pushed back. So we took it off of our list because for Rake Appreciation, we don't like to pick books that don't have audiobooks, just because a lot of our participants need an audiobook. So I'm, I'm intimidated. This is one of the oldest ones out there. This is from 1974. The first historical was in 1972. So that lets you know, you know, this book, this book here is almost 50 years old. It's almost 50 years old. So I'm just intimidated by age, but uh, I'm hoping that it can catch me. One of the things in those books is not even just like non-consensual stuff that happens because just being honest, being someone who reads older books like that, like I can buy into a certain amount of it, you know, I can handle it. It's more of just like the characters aren't written as compassionate, compassionately or as lovingly. And so they're very hard to attach themselves to. And another author I've had that problem with is Jude Devereaux. Another book that gets recommended all the time is The Velvet Promise. Now, I haven't heard great things about this one either. This one's from 1981, and I haven't heard super great things, but this one is um, definitely highly recommended. What does this one say? This one says, it's her wedding day, but Judith vowed that her husband would get only what he took from her. See, like, ooh, we're already setting up for rape, you know? At the flower bedecked altar, the first touch of their hands ignited an all-consuming passion. Gavin Montgomery looked deep into her golden eyes and burned with desire for her, but his heart had never pledged to another. But his heart had been pledged to another. Humiliated and alone in a strange castle, Judith resolved to hate this husband who took her body but rejected her love. So we're just in for a big rape fest in this one and emotional cheating. So like this, it scares me because of triggers, but also... I, do I want to read more Jude Devereaux? Kind of. I have quite a few of her books, again, because I'm a collector of old historicals, but it intimidates. And then we have some other old ones. We I do have a copy of Sky O'Malley. Now, I know this one is more of a family saga, but I did end up finding this beautiful um, uh, first edition of this. Well, I guess not this is the first edition mass market. This one was actually released in trade format first, but I did find a beautiful copy of Sky O'Malley. And I know that Big Sis loved this book a lot and there are audiobooks for this. And this one just gets into a lot of crazy places is what I've heard. So I do wanna try Sky O'Malley at some point, even being intimidated. And then good old Joanna Lindsay. I just went ahead and picked this beautiful copy I found when I was in Georgia. Um, and this is a first edition of this one. And I believe this is the very first Mallory novel. I think this is the first Mallory novel. Um, and this one, Love Only Once, I know that um, some book clubs have done this. And this is a lot of people's like favorite Joanna Lindsay. Um, so yeah, I wanna give it a try. Is this a Mallory novel? I don't know, it says the hero is, the heroine's name is Reggie. Oh, her name is Regina. Okay. 
And the hero's name is Nicholas Eden. So I don't know if this is the first Mallory novel or not now, but either way, there's this. So I do want to get to that one at some point. Then I just have a couple other ones here. So I also want to read some Shannon Drake and I'm mostly intimidated by her because I believe most of her books, let me check. Yes, most of her books are medieval. Medieval time periods are difficult for me. They just are. Um, I'm pretty sure this Jude Devereaux one is that too. Well, that one doesn't say, but I'm pretty sure that one is too. But Shannon Drake, I'm pretty sure most of her books are all medieval. And those are just a tough time for me. Um, this one is A Dashing Knight and a Damsel in Distress. Um, but it, we do have a step back on this one nice sexiness there so yeah again intimidated by it being old and by um like i love this rapunzel cover sorry and it by it being um medieval that's another thing that intimidates me about those then i have one that i'm not super super intimidated by mostly because this one is basically novella length which is cool um, but I also think that this one isn't like as romantic as some of her other ones, but I don't know. It's only like 10 chapters. It even has discussion questions in the back, which is really cool. Um, but I heard about this one on one of the podcasts that I love and I was really intrigued by it. And so I found a good copy of it actually. And it's a master, a matter of class by Mary Bello, Balog, whatever name we're doing, actually found a really beautiful copy of this. Um, and this one is supposed to be about, okay, so Lady Annabelle Ashton is the daughter of an earl. She finds herself disgraced by scandal, but smirched by shame. The earl is only too happy to marry Annabelle off to anyone who will have her. And though Bernard wishes to use Annabelle to propel his family, his son does not wish to marry her, preferring instead to live in the wi a wild single life he's accustomed to. With this, Bernard serves his son an ultimatum, marry Annabelle or make do without family funds. Having no choice, Reginald consents and enters into a hostile engagement in which the prospective bride and groom are openly antagonistic, each one resenting the other for their current state of affairs. And so begins an intoxicating tale rife with dark secrets, deception, and trials of love. But a story in which little is as it seems. So that's the part about this. So some of you I know have read this because you mentioned it to me before. Because I listen to the podcast, I know what that thing is, so I'm not going to say it. So it has me intrigued, but I'm also nervous because it's very short. So what does that mean? Like, but if anyone could do it, I feel like Mary could do it. So this is one I'm a bit intimidated by, but I do want to give it a go sometime. Maybe I'll save it for the next like historical romance readathon because it's great and it feels very fall. Maybe this fall will be the time. All right, and then the last book that I want to mention, um, and this is one as well that I do plan to read in the near future, but I'm nervous to read. Okay, I'm nervous to read. And that is The Ray Kess by Scarlett Peckham. So this is one of my friend's favorite historical romances. This is book one in the Society of Sirens. Volume two is coming out for March of 2023 and I got an arc of that book. So I only have like six months to get to it, but I have heard mixed things about this book. I know this book is pretty angsty. I know this book is feminist. That's not always bad. I'm not horrified by that um, by any means, but I do think that it could be very interesting. So this is about Serafina and she is on a quest for women's women's rights and she's looking to like expose men who have like used her for her body but then like shame her basically um so yeah and so it's very interesting and then there's adam who he is a widowed scottish architect with two young children and he has a business to protect and he could never ever afford to fall for serafina um 
and then they begin a fling that soon forces them to confront painful secrets and yearnings they thought they'd never have again. But when Serafina discovers Adam's future depends on the man she's about to destroy, she must decide what to protect, her desire for justice or her heart. So I could foresee this book being very angsty and difficult to get through, but I do want to read this book. I have read two of Scarlett Peckham's other books. Um, I have read both The Duke I Tempted and The Earl I Ruined. Um, I didn't read The Lord I Left because content in it that I heard about I'm not really interested in. But I'm very interested in the kinds of stories that Scarlett Peckham is telling. I've just been... I don't know what it is, too, because I know how much my friend loves this book. But then I heard how some other people talked about it, and I just got very intimidated by this book. But it's going to happen. We're going to read it, and I'm going to see how it goes. Um, and either way, I know Scarlett Peckham knows how to write, and I love that this one is a traditionally published one um, because I did really enjoy her self-published books. So I'm excited. And the volume two got pushed two years, so I'm very intrigued to see, you know, what she what got held up and everything. So there we go. So yeah, there we go. There's my list. I know this was a little bit, maybe not what you were expecting. I don't know. This was hard to put together because like I said, I'm not too intimidated by a lot of things. I'm pretty much willing to give anything a go, especially after reading the Deliver series by Pam Godwin. But there are still some books because of like their writing style or the time they were written that I may be nervous about. So yeah, if you enjoyed this book, this book, <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. I put up new videos three to four times a week. I also have a Patreon and channel memberships if you're interested in supporting what I do here. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video, y'all. Bye.